Hi everyone! Join me today while we paint this mixed floral bouquet in a clear vase. Today I'm using my 3 quarter inch Intuition flat brush and my size 6 Intuition round, both by Artigria. I'm also using my St. Petersburg Classics watercolor paints and this watercolor paper is a 4x6 pre-cut from my 8x10 Crafts brand watercolor paper. I got this at Dollar Tree and it is wonderful paper. I've been very happy with it. It's three dollars. You cannot go wrong. So let's get started. So I'm starting with a light wash of a raw umber actually raw sienna sorry and this is kind of light I'm going to make it just a little bit deeper and I'm outlining got a little fiber in there I'm outlining my face just the rough shape of it just um, leaving the leaving the actual vase shape the um, untinted, the color of my paper. And then I'll go back with just a really light wash and I want to blend that in and I'm not worried about this border at all. I'm just uh, trying to have a very loose background and I'll pull some of this pigment to the bottom of the vase so that I just have kind of a, a natural shadow there and I'll come back afterward um, after my bouquet is done and probably make a bit more shadow but but for now we're just getting kind of the loose idea pulling some of that down then I think it might be interesting to use the back of my uh, one of my brushes that has these they have these really neat handles that are great for just kind of scraping some texture in and what happens when you scrape texture into the into this watercolor paper, especially if it has been wetted at all, is that as it dries, you get more pigment retention in those scrapes. And I just think that that's, that can kind of be a neat effect there. Gives it a little, just a little more visual interest. And then I wanna go in with a green. Here I'm going to use an olive green. Today I'm using my St. Petersburg Classics, which are really, they are probably my most favorite watercolor paints. Just, I love them so much. And I'm just gonna go from inside the vase with these stems, and then see how, as I go out here, I'm getting some some bleed and I love that that's actually intentional that will make a really nice background for this bouquet and I would like to say I'm you know I'm very aware of how I'm going to position things and whatnot and I'm not that would be a lie <laughs> I, would, I would like to be but I kind of just do what I feel, which kind of gets me in trouble sometimes because then, you know, I don't have room for maybe like my my main flowers or, or whatever, but that's fine. It's just going to have to be fine because this is what it is today. Um, and so now I want to go with just another green real quick. I don't want this to take too long because I still want some time while this background is kind of wet, I want to do some florals. 
but I'm just going to take another green in here. And this is Green Cane from the St. Petersburg Classics. And I just want to do some, some different kinds of leaves. And I am not, I'm not trying to do anything that seems super botanically correct. I don't tend to have a lot of uh, knowledge about actual botanicals and I don't really pretend that I do. I love flowers and I love creating these but <laughs> I don't necessarily know what I'm doing. And this is the Bordeaux and, uh, and actually no I'm going to go in with a violet first and I think what I'll use is just violet. And what I want to do here is just create a little bit of, um, let's see, I've let this get a bit dry, but now it's wet down here where I've done some of those greens. So I'm just kind of dotting in these lupine type flowers. And these are just kind of the individual little um, petals on them and then what I'll do is I'll go back because I want these I do want these to have a bit of a loose look I'll go back in just a moment and I will just dot in some plain water in and around those leaves um, petals so I do want to go ahead and do that and I like to start with what I think is the driest flower and the reason I want to do that is because that is going to be the one that bleeds out less as time goes on and so I, I want to get that done now but it's also because I don't want these to fully bleed into the water water that I'm um, brushing in because if it all bleeds into this into these additional petals then it ends up looking kind of flat and not exactly what I want so I'm just taking a bit of water on the tip of my brush and just kind of, you know, giving a little brush stroke, just touching some of these petals. So now I do want to take this Bordeaux, just such a pretty rich pink, a very deep pink, and I think what I'll do is these flowers that I just love to do where I just kind of dot in this center and then I will brush some petals into that. I just I love to make these. They are they are just such a favorite. So after I've made that center I just take clean water on my brush and I just kind of um, with some loose brush strokes brush these petals in and see you just kind of can't go wrong and and I just love the abstract kind of feel they give you know four or five petals it really does not matter and I do kind of try to angle them a bit differently from each other so that well so that they have some variety they look a little more natural as if they were actually in a in an arrangement can add a little more pigment into centers if if they need that so I like that I'm happy with that And I'd like to go in with, let's see, I, I think 
I want to go in with an ochre. This is a light ochre, and I think it will make a nice background color with some, just some little dotty background floral kind of filler flowers, I think. And then I'll come back probably and and figure out some, maybe a little more leaves to do. We'll do that shadow. But I, I like to do these and I just put this water on around these dots. So it just kind of looks like, I can't think of any yellow florals that that do this uh, Spanish broom maybe but you know baby's breath is kind of a a white version of this and uh, and I just like that that pigment just kind of bleeds there into the water and these are very simple you can come back with um, some little just some little stems in there I got a little crazy there and some of my pigment went from these um, Bordeaux colored flowers into this and I do not care <laughs> I am NOT going to stress over that I think it'll still be very pretty and actually give a little bit of depth to those pink flowers I could go and dab that dry that out a little and you know make sure I don't lose too much but I I am really fine with that so so I'm gonna leave that and uh, I want to make a little water line and I'm just trying to figure out if I want to use what I want is kind of a sepia tone I think because I want a little bit of a mix between this background color and a gray and I, I think the sepia will do that for me but I'm going to do it very very light hopefully and I want it about a third down okay a little too light so I'm just making this kind of swirl And then I'm just dipping my brush in and uh, and making this watery just inside the vase and it is fine for the stems to touch this because I like for those to actually bleed a little and fade And I want to come up inside the, the water line a little bit too. So I think that that's okay. I don't know if maybe I should have used a gray or I don't know enough about this, but I like it real well. And then I just want to take some more greens, I think, and uh, going in with my olive here. And I just want to make a, a bit more of the defined leaves and the reason I want to do that is because I feel like the blurred leaves are just lovely and make such good visual interest and depth and some more defined leaves will give this a bit more um, charm I'm not sure But I love this olive green it is well on every palette I use olive green is my mainstay green it's it's what I use more than anything and I know a lot of people really recommend blending your greens and I think that's wonderful 
I um, I do sometimes add some yellow in there and but I just think olive is such a good for the color palettes that I use it is it's such a good choice And I want to bring something kind of darker into this right here so that it just kind of overlaps. And then I can dot some in there. And then you can see that I'm not too concerned with being very strict with my brush. I, I try to keep my wrist quite relaxed as I really as I brush anything in but I notice that I have to think about that and I I do think about it with my leaves quite a bit so I'm really happy at the direction that this has gone it so much and I just feel like this is a little empty in here and these purple flowers they need some stems now lupine they're similar to blue bonnet and they they need some of those long um, just very long and almost wispy leaves just like that and then I'm just going to dip my brush and kind of um, squiggle it on my palette and then come back for just some little flecks of stuff here and there I tend to have one side of a painting that I okay I did not mean to do that so <laughs> that got a little crazy it got a little away from me and I may mess up my background here trying to get rid of it but I'm, I'm gonna see if I can just erase it it's a pretty good quality paper so maybe I can do that and I feel like with art at all it's just so important not to get too caught up in the details of if if something is perfect or not I, I think when we let that go it just gives such a freedom to our art that we're not so focused on an end result, but we actually get to enjoy the process. You know, it's disconnected from an outcome. And so I, I just think that that's such a healthy, um, good thing. And it has been for me. So I'm just leaving that. I want it to dry. And then, you know, I could certainly do a few little, these little tendril squiggly things. But while that's drying, I will put a bit more of a shadow beneath here and I'll just use that same sepia that I used for the water I want a fairly light wash of it and I just want that hint of a shadow and then I want to blend it in so I'm just taking more water felt like this was such a fun idea to keep the the vase itself white you know clear I've uh, this is my second attempt I tried this earlier today and and just really liked it, it was really fun 
so I thought you know I definitely want to try that again so I'm so glad I did I actually I think I'm gonna call that pretty much finished and uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial I hope you'll try it and certainly if you try it I'd love it if you'd let me know how how it goes and whether you enjoyed it so as always, happy painting!